in this video, learn the steps that I took to awaken my extroverted feeling and what you can do to build a stronger and healthier connection to other people. Learn the power of friendship. The thing that I did to awaken my extroverted feeling was to abandon my traditional style of just vlogging and at home in front of a camera. Instead of uh, just vlogging, what I started doing was I started going up to people on the street. I learned that every single person has a story to tell and has a unique perspective and I learned it. These perspectives are fascinating. Uh, how would you describe her? How would I describe her? Me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know, the best. That's cool, that's yeah. cool. And how would you describe him? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> that's awesome. How long have you known each other? Mm. Seven, eight months. Yeah, about seven months. Yeah. Oh, cool. And I learned that I wanted to share these things with you guys. I wanted you to be able to experience the kind of connections that I get to experience as an open empath, as a person that just goes out and exposes myself to other people and their experiences, their feelings and their lives. Well, many people say they are on YouTube because they want to help people, because they want to make people laugh, because they want to uh, make people feel a little bit better. I feel like, you know, I'm here on YouTube uh, because I'm just trying to figure out the mysteries of the universe. These secrets that are, in a way, locked away from us, kept away from us. Learning to get past the small talk. A lot of the time it can feel as if our relationships with other people are scripted, that we talk about the same things, the same boring subjects. And these kind of walls that we build up, they are walls between us and walls between the other person. Most people want nothing but to find people they can trust and open up to and people who will listen to and understand them the way they are. So the first thing you want to do is to learn to put down your walls, to learn to open up and to share your feelings with other people. I have realized that I've developed this kind of by any means necessary kind of mentality, which is I will push myself as far as I need to in order to understand why we are here and for what reason we are here and just what it is that makes people tick. Sometimes we can worry that we share too much and that we put ourselves in a vulnerable position and because of that we got rejected. But often we have to accept that reaction is a part of life. It's the fastest way to learn if you fit with and mesh with another person. How would you describe her? Um, Amazing mother. <laughs> Amazing wife. Um, thank you. Hard worker. Oh, thank you. Fun. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And how would you describe him? Uh, maybe one word. Very kind. You know, these kind of things, they always make me really happy. It's like seeing a butterfly flap by or seeing a falling leaf now in the beginning of August. Uh, that's the beauty of life and it's right in front of us. When other people react you, what they do in reality is they redirect you. They show you that, hey, I'm not open to this, but you can always go talk to that person instead. When you feel like you wanna start going out and making friends, it's easy to get hung up on the first connection you make. Making friends is like playing the lottery. You have to buy a lot of tickets to win and maybe out of a hundred people, only one or two people are going to be actually interesting for you to hang out and spend more time with in the longer perspective. But you have to play to win and if you get hung up on that first initial reaction, if that first initial person doesn't really accept you, it can feel as if you are simply not worthy and simply not good enough. Being able to just meet the person and after 10 seconds tell them you know who they are in the sense to tell them what their passion is in life what things that make them tick what things to give them energy that just reaffirms once again that uh, my mission is to be a mirror to other people a mirror that can reveal to other people their truth their way of seeing life their unique insights their unique mission and story getting people to tell their stories and to shape their own narrative it's something I like to do for every single person to give them the chance to see themselves because how often do we really get a chance to see ourselves? How often do we not 
interact with each other is based on falsehoods and small talk and deceit and how often do we not long for people to really understand us and to really see us another thing i see in myself while i go and do these things is a desire to inspire you to do the same can you imagine if you started going up to people in your local area can you imagine if you started organizing meetups and events and started connecting with people in your community based on who you are and based on what you are passionate about but also based on a true and real curiosity to find out the truths and insights that exist within each person what do you feel like you get from hanging out with each other's um, we have a very nice balance i think sometimes we just sit anywhere and then at a time we go out and do things. And what about you? What do you like value about uh, hanging out with them? Yeah, it's like the best of both worlds. So, yeah. Um, uh, I liked that we can watch a movie in the evening and that we can go on a festival the day to after. Learn that you are a person that's fascinating and interesting. You're a beautiful person with unique qualities. Just as you have learned that other people hold the beauty within them. So the law of mirrors suggests that then by, based on that same logic, you must be a pretty cool person too. The fifth practice of extroverted feeling is understanding the law of mirrors. If you truly and genuinely believe that other people are fascinating and interesting, and if you take the step to open up to and share with other people, you become a lighthouse. You become a person that attracts other people to you. Because you share so openly of yourself, other people come to you and they too share so openly about themselves. The more I approach people, the more I find that people start approaching me too. The law of mirror states that everything you do is reflected back at you. We often struggle with our relationship to the outer world and struggling with that relationship to the outer world can look like this. People are so stupid, so annoying, so difficult. People are never real. People are never being themselves. When we feel bad about other people, we manifest outwardly, uh, we project outwardly a negative energy. We share the, this uh, frustration with the outer world becomes pushed back to us from the outer world to us. And our walls go up and their walls go up. But you have to be the first person to take that wall down. You have to be the person that initiates to open, to connect. One of the first things you want to do when you want to connect with others is to learn the practice of metta contemplation. It's said that the Buddha mastered two forms of meditation. One was to clear his mind of thoughts and the second was to experience a sense of connection to the world, to the people in it and to everyone and everything. Metta contemplation is about thinking about the things that you love and appreciate about people in your life. It's about learning to look at something and to see the beauty that that thing holds. Every single thing in the world, every single person has some kind of unique quality that makes them a beautiful and fascinating individual. And if you learn to embrace the practices of metta meditation, you learn to develop a healthy and positive mindset that makes it easier for you to connect to and approach other people. What do you like most about each other? Oh, <laughs> God, everything. Um, I like Ezra's passion, I think, for stuff and for me. <laughs> I think, yeah, uh, his passion, his creativity. Um, and he's kind. Yeah. Uh, what do I like most about <laughs> Becky? <laughs> uh, yeah, Becky's uh, Becky's rad. Becky's lovely. She's lots of fun. Uh, she's always up for doing stuff. Um, you're kind of very like perceptive and emotionally switched on. Um, incredibly like kind of kind and nurturing and supportive and very loving and very creative. <laughs> and she skateboards, which is great. Um, you know, she's really social, which is nice. He said one thing. One thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, okay, cool. Thank you so much for your answers. Okay. Yesterday, I was just out in the park. I didn't record anything. I just walked around. I just looked at people. I just sat down and I just enjoyed my free space, my free time. 
And uh, during that time, multiple people came up to me. They just came up to me. Uh, two girls came up to me and asked for my life story. One guy started talking about his struggles as he was an ENTJ entrepreneur and he had been working really hard, but then he got the stroke and now he was coming back from that. You know, when people see that you're open, when people see that you are ready to face the world, when people see that you are curious, when people see uh, the passion that is inside of you, you radiate like a light post for other people to approach you. The more true you are to yourself and the more strong you are in your own feelings and the more open and the more connected you feel to the world, the more the world will try to connect with you. I know many people don't really know what extroverted feeling is and many hold negative opinions about extroverted feeling. Some think of it as being fake, um, being manipulative and being shallow or superficial or image conscious. To me, extroverted feeling is a lot like extroverted intuition. In fact, I think the two are often frequently confused. While extroverted intuition is about a multitude of information, patterns and connections, extroverted feeling is about learning to account for a multitude of perspectives and differences in opinions and values. Learning to see that everyone has their unique color and vibe and energy. Learning to understand that everyone has their unique perspective and way of seeing life and learning how to combine and mix and process and synthesize and build bridges between these things. I often see myself as the bridge builder, the person that takes all these different opinions that are floating around in the cyber universe and the person that finds healthy compromises that allow us to connect and to stand together despite being different and despite of our differences. People that have not been able to develop their extroverted feeling often feel a strong feeling of loneliness. Without extroverted feeling, it can feel as if nobody understands you, as if you are doomed to be alone. And when your extroverted feeling is unhealthy and stressed, it can feel as if you have this anger, frustration with the world, with people. You think of people as ugly, mean-spirited, manipulative, uh, toxic, and unhealthy. And this feeling, it makes it hard for you to connect with people and it makes most of your interactions with other people more negative too. Learn to notice when you're stuck in this spiral of ever-increasing negativity towards other people, feeding into even more negative interactions with people, feeding into more and more negative beliefs about people, feeding into an overall sense of isolation and loneliness. And notice that when you're stuck in the spiral, all you have to do is take a second to give people the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to be honest with you, there's been several times where my openness had led to me being manipulated and used and exploited by other people. But I'll also be honest with you that honestly, I don't dwell on those experiences that much. Because overall, my experiences with other people have been more positive than negative and sure, there's been a few rotten eggs out there. I feel like the good interactions have always made the whole experience worth it. And I wouldn't want to become a closed off negative person. One of the best things about extroverted feeling types is this innate sense of modesty. I'm not better than anyone else. Everyone is unique. Everyone has something valuable to say. I'm not better than anyone else. I'm just me and everyone's just them. And I'm good because I'm me and they are good because they are them. I think ultimately developing extroverted feeling is about nurturing that sense of modesty. Feelings of self-superiority or feelings of grandiosity make it really truly hard to connect with people. Because why would you ever want to connect with people that you feel are less than you? Why would you ever want to connect with other people if you didn't truly believe that they were interesting or that they could teach you something? There's a reason why psychologists like Jordan Peterson say assume that everyone knows something that you don't. And it's because ultimately to assume the latter, to assume the opposite, is to shut yourself off from this experience of learning from and through the power of friendship. I'll be honest, I haven't really found what's behind that gate yet. I haven't figured out the secrets of the universe. 
But I feel like I'm learning a little bit every day with each conversation, with each person, I'm being shown something and my mind just wants to run with it, wants to figure it out, wants to understand it. And that's my passion in life. And of course also, I really do genuinely care about people and I really do genuinely want to connect with others. I didn't know you could just walk around that. Huh. <laughs>